and influence isn't always realised with money. Last year, Coca-Cola headquarters in Sydney provided the venue for a seminar on the future of foods, run by the Dietitians Association of Australia. Philip Juffs is the association's president. Surely that must have been a, a mistake. So that particular event was uh, the offices that were offered up were from someone uh, working there, and that was for convenience. Um, look, you know, I, I concede that there are some optics issues, as you describe it, with that, and, you know, we, we learn and move on. So it was a mistake? I don't, I don't think I'd call it a mistake. The members uh, who were uh, having that meeting w work in the food industry, and that's part of their normal, you know, part of their normal workplace. The Dietitians Association of Australia says it supports the idea of a tax on sugary drinks. The association is the professional body representing 6,500 dietitians. It takes hundreds of thousands of dollars a year in sponsorships. Some of its corporate partners include food giants Nestle, Campbell Arnott's and a group called Cereal for Brekkie, representing big cereal manufacturers. We have an annual budget of around $5 million as an organisation and around 8% of that is derived from corporate partnerships and of that no more than about 1% comes from any single partner so we're able to minimise any influence like that. Do you think sugar's to blame for the obesity and diabetes crisis that we're having at the moment? It's an easy uh, thing to say, yes, but it's, it's a lot more complicated than that. In its simplest terms, weight uh, management really is about energy in, how much we eat, and energy out, how much physical activity we do. But that doesn't happen in isolation. We don't live in a test tube. In Tasmania, surgeon Gary Fetke says the Dietitians Association has been campaigning against the advice he's been giving to his patients to cut their sugar intake. Dr Fetke is puzzled by the dietitian's position, given the clear results he's seen in his patients. Within days, these people start feeling better. And particularly in diabetes, they start getting blood glucose control that they haven't achieved in decades. And so they actually come back a week down the track, two weeks down the track, saying, hey doc, I'm actually reducing my medication, I feel better, my brain's working again. And over a longer period of time, we see their ulcers heal we see their function improve, and I've seen patients, their peripheral neuropathy improve. Now, that's not supposed to happen, but I can guarantee it. Gary Fetke has become a fierce champion of a low-carbohydrate diet. Quitting sugar is the first step. So I came up with a handout which advised patients to reduce their sugar intake. As it turns out, what I was advising is completely now in lines with the recommendations of the World Health Organisation. So I gave that handout to my patients and that's when the trouble started. The Dietitians Association complained to the medical board about the advice he's been giving to his patients. Many people would be surprised that a doctor couldn't give dietary advice, right? Do Don't you think? Doctors can give dietary advice. It's about the, the scope of that advice. And so uh, dietitians are there, you know, they are the trained professionals in nutrition, just like doctors are the professionals in medicine. Dietitians are there to be the uh, experts in nutrition. Gary's clearly a staunch nutrition advocate for his patients, and that's a good thing, absolutely no doubt. In terms but you of, say he can't do it. No, I'm not saying he can't do it. It's about the, the level of advice. There's a, there's a line across which uh, you know, specific type of advice should be provided by particular professionals. Um, I've still got a wound on the heel. The Australian Health Practitioner Regulation Agency found he was working outside his scope of practice and wasn't qualified to give specific nutritional advice. Gary Fetke is still advising his patients to cut their sugar intake. What are the consequences? Could you be struck off? Yes. The, that is the potential that if I keep receiving complaints that I have the potential to be struck off. And each year I get reported by another dietitian. So each year I've had uh, a, dietetic, a dietitian anonymously report me to the medical board for giving this advice. Australia has one of the highest rates of obesity in the world.